Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem number 49, group anagrams. Let's read the question prompt. Given an array of strings, strings, group the anagrams together. You can return the answer in any order. An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using all the original letters exactly once. So, if we're given this example input of strings, eat, t, tan, ate, nat, and bat, we should return bat as one group, nat and tan as another group, ate, eat, and t as another group. Let's see how they got those. Let's focus on ate, eat, and t. Well, if we remember what an anagram is, basically we're taking the letters of a word, and if we can form another word by rearranging those letters and using all of them, then they should be an anagram group. So in this case, we have A, right, and there's one A, there's T, and there's one T, and there's E, and there's one of them, right? And we see that's the case for eight, eat, and T. So that's why it's in a group. Then if we look at this group, we see that we have, you know, one N, we have one A, and we have one T. So that's why Nat and Tan are in the same group because they have those counts for the letters. And Bat, it's on its own because there's no other group that has, you know, one B, one A, and one T. So that's how they derive the groups. Now, let's think about how we might make a general use algorithm to solve this problem. Okay, so we've read the question prompt and we've gone through the example, but how exactly do we do this in a generic way? Well, the approach that we want to take here is actually to figure out the count of each character. And what we're going to do is we're going to represent that as a list of length 26. And the reason we're going to be using 26 is because there's 26 English characters. So that means for every position in our array here, the index will represent the count for that character. So for example, the zeroth index will represent the amount of A's we have, the first index will represent the amount of B's we have, and on and on and on for every single character in the English alphabet. Then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go through our word here for each you know word in our input array, and we're basically going to form one of these arrays here for each word. So for example, we have the word eat, so we see an E here, right? So we would increment, you know, this, I guess this would be this one. So this would become a one. We see an A, we see a one, and we see a T. So we'd make it a one here. And then all the other values would be zero. Now we need a way to actually store this and we need to make a group. Well, what if we had a dictionary? So we have a dictionary where the key will basically be this, you know, array that we've just constructed. So, you know, this will be here as the key and the value is actually going to be the string that we're working with and we'll store like a list of these because there can be a group here, right? So we'll put the string eat here and then, you know, if we get the word T, then, you know, we'll do the same thing. We'll see that T, you know, this will be a fresh array now. We'll see that there's one T, there'll be one E and there'll be one A. So we would put it again for that key and we would input T here. And then what we would do, okay, we get to tan. Now tan's gonna have one T, it's gonna have one N, uh, one A and one N. So this would be a new key because obviously this isn't the same one. So we have, you know, the second um, value here. And then we would have basically tan and on and on and on we go through. And that's how we're gonna form our groups. Now you may be wondering, okay, how are we gonna hash these lists because you typically cannot hash lists because they're mutable, right? Uh, dictionary keys have to be immutable. So to get around that, we're actually going to cast this entire um, list every time we make it into a tuple. That way we can use it as a dictionary key because tuples are immutable. So that's how we're gonna get our keys. So we basically just need to build this array of length 26 for each of the uh, words we have here. And then we're going to cast it to a tuple and use that as our key. So obviously T and eat are going to have the same array here. And then when we cast it to the tuple, they will represent the same key in the dictionary. So we can add them to the, you know, the value list for that, you know, tuple value here where, you know, at the zeroth index, there's a one 
I guess at the, what is this, the, the fourth index, it would be an E, and then at whatever index is for T, there'd be a one here. So that's how we're gonna derive it. And that's the general idea. And once we do that, you know, we'll have all of our groupings and you know some values here. And all we have to do at the end is actually just return the values of this dictionary here, which will be, you know, uh, the list of lists that we're looking for. So let's go to the code editor and put this into code. It should be a little bit more clearer when you see the actual um, code implementation. I'll see you there. Okay, we're back in the editor. Now let's write the code. Remember that we need a dictionary to store our results here for the groups. So let's define that. So we're going to say groups equals collections dot default dict list. So basically, I'm just creating a dictionary whose default value is it list. So that way, I don't really have to check whether or not something's in there. If it is, it's just going to initialize an empty list and I can just append straight to it. Uh, that way, I don't have to do checks for whether or not a value is in there. This is something exclusive to Python, this default dict, although other languages probably have a similar implementation. You can use a standard dictionary here if you want, um, but you're going to have to check whether or not a key exists. This default dictionary actually just lets me avoid that, but it's just syntactic sugar. You don't have to use this if your language doesn't support it. Anyway, getting back on track. So we need to iterate through all of the strings and calculate that you know, array of the counts for each letter. So let's do that. So we're going to say for string in stirs, we're going to say characters. So this is going to represent the character array. So remember, we need to keep the count for each of the English characters. So we're going to define an array of length 26 and initialize every single element to be zero. So that's going to represent the count for each English character. So now we need to go through the string character by character. So we're going to say for char in string, we're going to say chars. So now we need to increment the count for each letter. But how do we actually derive the index value for each uh, specific letter? Well, Python has this nice function called ord, which basically takes a character and returns its ASCII value. Now, the problem here is the ASCII value um, is actually going to be greater than 26 for our characters. So what we need to do is normalize it by basically subtracting the ASCII value for A. That way we will always have a value for our characters here that is between 0 and 25, which is the indexes of our list. If you don't understand how this works, go look up the ASCII table and go look up how ORD works uh, in order to understand this. So this will give us our ASCII position um, you know, normalize to the basically the start of our 26 length array here. And we're going to increment the count for that character by one. And we're going to do that for every single character in our string. Now what we want to do is we want to add this array as a key to our groups here. So that way that any character or sorry, any string that's an anagram will have the same, you know, character array. Uh, that way we can group things by you know group and that's why we have a list of values because you know multiple um, anagrams will be having multiple words or the, the same anagram will have multiple words to it so what we want to do is we want to say groups but remember that lists are not uh, immutable right so they are immutable data structures which means that they cannot be used as dictionary keys so to get around that we need to cast our you know, list here to a tuple. So that way we can use it as a hash key. And then we can simply append to that hash key, the string that we were working with. And in the end, like we said, all we need to do is return, ugh, I cannot type say groups dot values. Jeez. Okay. Oh my God. Groups dot values. So let's do that and submit. And cool, we see that it works. Now, let us talk about the time and space complexity. So, what we're doing here is we're going over every single string in the, you know, given input and we are going through it character by character. So that is going to be an O of N operation to go through all of the, uh, you know, strings here. And then for each string, what we're doing is we're iterating through all the characters. So we're going to say that our time complexity is going to be big O of n times big O of k, where k equals the length of the longest string, right? So this is going to imply that we have a 
runtime complexity of O of n k. Similarly, we're going to have to hash um, all of the you know groups here, and this is going to be you know dependent on the length of basically the, the longest string that we have here. So again, we're going to have O of n k for the space, and that's basically the time and space complexity for this problem. If you've enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my other videos if you're prepping for on-site interviews at any of the big tech companies. This will definitely help in your preparation. Happy coding.